Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome back to Backyard Astronomy. You just got a brand new telescope, or your child did, and you're trying to figure out just what it is you need to do to set up an equatorial mount. But that's what we're going to talk about today. Stay tuned. Okay, before you can use this telescope on an equatorial mount, there are some things that you've got to set up. So we're going to talk a little bit about some of those things. We're going to talk about latitude and what we need to do with it uh, to level it. We're going to need to level the telescope and we need to balance it. Both axes has to be balanced and we'll talk about those axes in just a minute. And then we're going to put this telescope into its starting position. Ah, interesting, isn't it? Okay, and then we need to do one final thing and that will be look at the celestial pole, identify what it is, and do what we call a polar alignment. Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is latitude. Uh, you need to know your latitude of where you're going to be viewing from, where you're going to set up the telescope. And you might want this to be pretty much where you want to do it every time. You'll be carrying this in and out of the house uh, or out of your garage or whatever. And you would like to be able to set it up with the least amount of setups. Uh, so to do that, find your place first, that's really what you want, and go ahead and give everything like you want and get it set up. So when you come back out, you can actually put it right back in the same place. Even mark the ground. Put a block in the ground, a little brick or something, just, uh, below the grass, that way you won't hit it with a lawnmower. But have somewhere to set your uh, telescope up every time and be in the same parallel uh, level and polar line position. So, let's look up what our latitude is. Look on a globe, or any map, even a road map, will actually tell you what your latitude is. The latitude is the location of where your spot is, and it never changes, so find out what it is. Now, what we need to do, now I've turned this telescope around. I know it looks a little different than what you just saw a minute ago. I turned it around so you can see this. If you'll look right here, there is a scale. This is for your latitude. And what you need to do with this is once you attain your latitude, is you'll loosen up, there's a bolt here, you'll loosen it up, and you'll be able to move this. Uh, well, it's a little stiff. You'll be able to move it back and forth. You see how I've got it, mine's been set since 1983, so it's been a long time. But anyway, uh, you'll need to look. Once you find out what your latitude is, I'll show you what you see. There's a little pointer. There's a little pointer right here. Now, most of the scopes are going to be pretty much mm, very similar anyway. Now, I'm going to set this for 30 degrees, just for grins. Now, I'm going to pull this up to it right at 30 degrees, and then I'm going to lock it down. Now, from now, that's where we're going to leave it. There's another little piece here and it's for fine adjustment we'll use that later now what when i said let's set it up in the yard you can do this latitude in the house it, it doesn't matter now once we're outdoors and we got it set what we want this particular telescope has a leg marked in and that needs to be pointed to the celestial pole or do north point it due north now if you'll notice this axis is what's pointing north and the reason is, is we want to look at what we call the celestial pole. And we'll get to that later. But anyway, this is how we're going to set it up. we got that temporary set for our latitude. The next thing you want to do is to level it. Now, uh, let's look at that a little bit. i got the telescope turned around, but on this particular telescope, I've got a, a bubble level on this side. Uh, so for your convenience, I'm going to use a different one. You can get this at a hardware store, Walmart, anywhere. It's just a bubble level, and you set it just like this, right wherever you want to. Now, I have a tray down here. There's no way on here to set this up here. Set right in here, and I can't see if I do that. So down here in the tray, you've already got your legs spread and you got them all tightened down like you want them. You put that right in the center of your tray. Okay, we got the level down in the tray. 
Uh, and this is the same tray that you put eye pieces and stuff in. What I would do is mark me a little spot there to set this in. Uh, if you don't have a bubble on your uh, mount. Uh, go ahead and set this right in the middle. And when you look at it, it's out of, it's out of uh, level. So what do you do about it? Well, you got one leg pointing to north. It all depends on which way it's leaning. If your bubble is to one side or the other, then you'll jack up or down one of these two legs here. But if it happens to be this direction, you may want to move this one. I'm going to move this one because you can actually see it. You got a bolt in it. You can unloosen it. And if you see that dropping, you see you can level that just by moving the legs up and down. Now I'm going to set that right there and we'll tighten it down. Now this is very important to do this. Put your latitude in and do the level. And once it's level, we're ready to go to our next step. Okay, next thing we're going to do, is we're going to balance the axis. The telescope has two axes on the equatorial mount. You have a right ascension and a declination. We're going to do the right ascension first. Alright, if I before you balance it, what you need to do is if you want to put an eyepiece in here, it could be a big eyepiece, you never can tell. So you need to put the eyepiece in here that you're going to use. Um, if it's two or three eyepieces that are pretty much the same length, you don't have no real worry. But some people use these big old, what they call wide angle eyepieces, and those are pretty heavy. So be sure to put your eyepiece in it, and then let's balance it. So let's unlock this axis. Now, if this was balanced, this telescope wouldn't move. Now this is moving this direction. Let's try the other way. Notice that it's definitely not balanced. So how do we balance it? That's what we do. There's a counterweight opposite the telescope. So what you need to do is move this weight until that telescope stops moving. Now, this could take a little bit of time. It may have to go all the way to the end. You never can tell. Depends on what you got on here. So let's see what that's doing. Still moving. Always try to make sure, not quite. Okay, let's see what that does. See, wherever we put it, see if it sits there. Appears to be a little heavy that direction. All right. All right, that's got it. We got that axis. Now, what about the other axis? Let's see. Let's unlock it. See this one? I don't think that's quite right either. Now, on this particular axis, most of the telescopes like this will have a uh, these uh, straps on here. And what you can do is you can loosen them up and you can move the telescope inside those rings. There you go. I went a little bit too far. And you'll do this trial and error. Remember now, you got to have that eyepiece in there while you're doing it. There we go. We got her there. See how that works? 
you can take it and turn it. And you want to do it in the horizontal positions like this. That's balanced. So now, the next thing we want to do, now you need to make sure you do this with eyepieces in it. The next thing you want to do is you want to put it back in this position, just like you see right here, and lock it down. Everything's locked down. This is called a starting position. It's for equatorial mount, a German equatorial mount. Starting position is this way. Remember, this axis is pointing north. This is now pointing, pointing north. Okay, now we're ready to do our polar lamp. Now, what do you do with polar lamp? Well, you got to know where the celestial pole is. That's where we're actually going to align it to. Well, we got our leg pointing north. And we're going to find what is called the polar star, which is the North Star in, in our case is what we call it. You wonder, well, where is it? Well, in essence, it should be right in line with this polar axis. So what you're going to do is you're going to look for our North Star. Now, if you remember, back when we used our, uh, our planisphere, we faced north. And we see the North Star is Polaris. And look how far above our horizon it is. It's not overhead. It's straight out just like you see here. But we need to get this perfectly aligned with it. And what we need to do is align this axis in fine tune. Now here's, here's what we're going to do. In order to do it, now you need to do this at night. You can't do this in the daytime. But we're going to go through the motions. Uh, some telescopes like this do have what is called a, a polar scope. Now, this particular one does. You'll pull this off and you'll sight through it and you'll be able to line it through here. Well, a lot of the modern scopes don't have that. And what they're doing is they're aligning it a different way. Um, and remember now, this is not for astrophotography or anything like that. This is for viewing only. This is our piece use actual viewing. And we'll talk a little bit more about that before we leave here today. Now, so let's see what we got to do. Now that we know we've got this axis pointing north, we need to line our scope up with the North Star. And what we're going to do is inside your viewfinder, you've got a crosshair. So you go out here at night, you locate the North Star like we just saw on our planisphere. We look, we find it, it's a little bit off. Now, down here on the scope, you remember those fine tuners we had? Let's say it's a little bit low. You can jack this right here until it actually moves it up and down. You can either, you can go up with it. If you need to go more, go down with it. Now you can loosen this axis and it'll float up and down. In fact, I'll show you just how it does work. All right, you see how it come down? Now, you can jack it up just like I'm doing here. If you'll watch that scope, it'll start moving up. You see it? There it goes. Now, it may not go back to exactly where we had it. Well, we had it was on 30. And uh, let's say it's got to go to 32. And this can be a little bit hard to do. There you go. It's moving pretty good there. Don't want to get too far. Wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of oil on it too. All right. I'm going to put it back where I had it by using the jack. Then this is fine tuning. Now your location might have been 30, uh, 30 degrees latitude, but it might have been 30 degrees point three or something like that. That point three is what you would have done with this. Now, let's say we got it right up and down vertically, but it's a little bit off center. These bolts right here, 
there's a nut under the bottom just crack it loose a little bit and you can drag jack this back and forth go this way and turn that one it'll push it over see how it moved it and if I want to go the other way I turn this one in and that's all you have to do now we're a polar line we're ready to look at our telescope now now that we've got it the latitude in we've got it level we've got the uh, telescope balance with our eyepiece in and we now have it in our polar position we've got it aligned with the pole I think I need to lock that back down before I forget all right now what do we do now well you find your object put it on it and with this particular scope and most of them probably what you bought does not have a drive on it so it will not follow the star well if you find up to a star if you look at what I'm doing right here this is what is called a slow motion control you notice my star is moving to, to the west I'm following that star it's like now now if it's going the other direction which you probably shouldn't even be messing with unless you're going to locate to a new object because you've aligned the polar axis if you have to move this axis right here any at all with the slow motion it's because you're dead you're not dead on the, the star but it's close enough for visual but you might want to next time you come out just to line up the polar star a little bit more finer because when you're when you're tracking say the moon we'll be tracking it just like this and it should stay pretty much where you want it now you can now it's going to move this way and that's the way you're moving right now so that's going to conclude how to do an equatorial mount uh, most of the stuff we just talked about is generic to all of our uh, equatorial mounts there are some other things that gets involved but when it's got electronic drives on it or has it always a go-to scope or a support mount that's a totally different animal remember the, the big fork mount we've got here that's done a whole lot different same principles but there's some other things that has to be done so I hope you enjoy your telescope if you have any problems drop me a line in the comments and I'll see if I can help you out until next time keep looking up